We can get a massive dopamine hit from buying a book or reading a book, even taking notes from a book. And the same with taking the time to listen to a podcast like this rather than watching Netflix or going to a conference when you could have done anything else with your weekend. Now, we can get a big dopamine hit because we know that we could be doing anything else with our time rather than pushing our business forward. So we feel that we are really investing in our business. But the big thing is that nothing is going to happen if you don't actually action the stuff that's in this podcast. Every single thing I'm going to talk about in every single episode is something that has been tried and tested either in my own businesses or in client businesses. So first-hand experience of using them. I'm not passing on any, anybody else's information here. This is all tried and tested and they've all moved the needle on profitability. Now, you, between all of these episodes, are going to have so many different things that you can action and fair enough, there could be a level of overwhelm. I don't think there will be, but at the same time, yes, there are going to be plenty of things to action, but go and action them. Listening to the podcast, taking notes on the podcast can only take you so far. You need to action it because that is what's going to actually move the needle on your business with all this stuff. So first off is you need to be actioning. But other than that, I hope that you've had a great day uh, today. Well, sitting here Tuesday night with a cup of tea, filming episode of the podcast, which... I'm pretty chuffed to be doing. I really like doing these podcasts, actually. And today, I was actually uh, viewing a venue this morning uh, for a, for a conference, a one-day marketing intensive small group that I'm going to be putting on. Uh, provisionally, it is the 6th of July in Glasgow. And so whenever you're listening to this, we might already be sold out for all I know. I don't know when you're going to be listening to this. You could be listening to this in 2022. I don't know. But if you're listening to this pretty soon after it went out, then what to do is hit me up on Instagram DM and I'll send you the link to it if it's already live. If it isn't, I'll keep you top of the list. So hit me up on Instagram DM and let me know that you want to come to the one day intensive provisionally 6th of July uh, and it looks it looks pretty certain, to be honest. Yeah, so 6th of July in Glasgow. It's going to be awesome. And I actually, I shared something with my program members the other day, and I said that something that I was considering doing, and I've already built it into the day structure, so I'm pretty sure that it's going to go ahead, which is I actually want to do a bit of an experiment with some super actionable stuff. So anybody who buys their ticket for this, is going to be sent a bunch of things in advance. So there'll be videos, there'll be screen recordings. It's not going to take up a lot of time, but just some how-tos so that you've got a few things set up so that when you come to the actual event, the first hour and a half is going to be super high-paced and actionable, and you're going to have to really do stuff so we're going to all run through the same stuff, but you're going to apply it to your business. And the challenge is going to be who can make the most money by the end of the day. Literally by five o'clock, who can make the most money? There'll be some sort of prize for it, but it'll be a pretty big prize if you make the most money, I guess. But I think it'll be a pretty cool experiment. I don't know how it'll go. Online marketing is a long game. Attention, building no like, and trust getting people to the point of becoming a lead, getting people to become a customer, getting people to multi-buy. But there's a whole bunch of things that I've learned that can move the needle extremely quickly. And we'll be running through those in the first hour and a half and seeing how much money you can make by the end of the day. Uh, one thing I'm really excited about actually is the food. Man, they showed me this like gourmet, hot and cold buffet thing. Probably why the place is so bloody expensive, to be honest. It's probably about 90% down to the catering, which is unfortunate, but it means that you're going to get a good lunch and you get unlimited teas and coffees. I'm digressing because I'm not even trying to sell this to you. It's going to be small group. I know it'll sell out, but if you're wanting to come to this thing, it's going to be absolutely awesome. So hit me up on Instagram DM at Neil Shoney Mac, and I will either send you the link if it's live uh, and if we've still got tickets, and I'll also add you to the waiting list if not. Uh, so I digress once again.
theme of the podcast, digressing any which way. So social proof hacks. This is something that I go on about all the time because so many people are failing with their online marketing in one of many ways. So there'll be tons of things that are going right for them and they're just not getting something specific. It's usually getting somebody to either become a lead or for somebody to take action and become a customer. And the biggest thing is, is social proof. People will listen to us if we're entertaining, if we've got some information that sounds good enough, but the biggest reason why somebody will ever become a lead or a customer or a multi-time customer is down to social proof. Now, social proof comes in many forms. It can be testimonial based. So that could be video testimonials of people who you've worked with, or it could be written testimonials of people who you've worked with. But it does go further than that as well. There's tons of ways online now that collectively we can find social proof. So for instance, if you run a Facebook advert, that uh, has a great image, great hook, great description, great call to action, great headline, all the stuff that you would expect for a great Facebook ad, you run it to the same audience, but you split test it. And one advert has 500 likes on it, 300 comments and a few shares, and the other one is a brand new ad. It is guaranteed that the one with the social proof on it is going to get lower cost per leads. It's going to get a higher click-through rate and therefore it's going to have a higher opt-in rate. And that is because people react to whatever they see that other people have already taken action. They react to where they see that other people have already walked the path that they're considering on taking and they're really happy and excited about it. So people want to buy from brands that other people are excited about and they want to work with people who other people have already worked with and can say that they had a good experience. And so where your marketing is usually breaking down is because even right at the basis stage, your content that you're putting out there every single day, it's probably lacking in social proof. Maybe the the content that you could be putting out on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Pinterest, maybe instead of just delivering value, maybe you could wrap it around your customers a lot more. Maybe you have a business that is product-based and you could share real pictures of people being super excited using the product that they've purchased. Maybe you are a hairdresser and what you should be doing is sharing lots of pictures of people who have just had their hair cut and it looks excellent. Maybe you're a coach of sorts. Maybe that's a personal trainer. Maybe you're a digital marketer listening to this. Well, what you should be doing, instead of just delivering content on how to lose weight, how to build muscle, how to run Facebook ads, is wrap your content round into stories of the people who you have already worked with tell real stories. Stories engage people, engagement gets higher reach, and guess what? On top of all that, social proof drives people to action. It's that same thing of, and man, I I always go so off script with every single thing that I do whenever it's long form. I'm pretty much running through my points without making them distinct points, right? So, <laughs> So one of them is social proof facts, right? So as we said, it could be testimonials, it could be this, that, the other. Social proof facts is one that most people don't really think about. And social proof facts is where within one sentence, you can show people that you're to be trusted and that other people have walked that path before them. An example of a social proof fact might be, if you were to be looking for an Indian restaurant in Glasgow tonight, right? And your intention is to go to Google to type in Indian restaurants Glasgow and to look through five or six different places and to choose your favorite and see if you can get a table for tonight. If the very first one that you click on says winner of Glasgow's best Indian restaurant for the past three years, what do you think the chances are that you're even going to look at option two, three, four, five, and six on Google. The social proof fact there is that you've won an award. You've had somebody 
choose you over Indian restaurants in Glasgow as the best Indian restaurant in Glasgow, three years running. That's a social proof fact. Another one might be over 5,000 five-star reviews on TripAdvisor. That is a social proof fact. We're ranked number one in the entire city on TripAdvisor. For another one, maybe you're a restaurant, maybe that's a, a social proof fact that you could be using in your adverts. Maybe it's a social proof fact you could have on your homepage of your website so that when somebody is considering booking a table when they're on your menu page, that they actually take action. So social proof facts can be a really big one. I mean, it can be telling people about the reviews. It can be telling about the the sheer number of people who have either bought your product or who have worked with you in your service. So it could be, uh, we've already changed the lives of over 1,000 people in this city. So that means that 1,000 people have already purchased from that brand before. Or maybe you have a lower price product and you scale it worldwide. Well, to be able to say that we've sold over 120,000 units worldwide, that's a huge statement. And if that pops up on your Facebook timeline or your Instagram timeline, and it's got a great image, it's got a great headline, it's got a great offer, but then the copy tells you that they've already shipped over 120,000 units worldwide, I apologize, then you're much more likely to take action because you know that it isn't just a great advert. You know that it is now a product that is in high demand. And social proof facts are something that are so so overlooked and they're so easy to use they take no time you can just literally look at your business and say what social proof facts do i have around me that i could be using on my paid advertising or using on my website or using within my email marketing you can just go and figure out what those are and you can apply them right now so let's see some other ones facebook ads so like i already said facebook ads a good example is when you split test two adverts and they're completely identical and it's going out to exactly the same audience, then having social proof on that advert is going to lower the cost per lead 99.9% of the time. I have to give that 0.1% in case anybody has ever experienced it otherwise. I speak to digital marketers all the time. I run adverts all the time, social proof, within an advert always drops the cost per lead. In fact, I was actually with a client today in which we've had to stop his Facebook adverts for the next three weeks planned anyway uh, because we've ended up getting him far too busy. Now, the advert that is absolutely killing it that's getting us about a quarter of the price per lead that we were used to and that is at scale is one that we worked on to get social proof on it. It's one that we specifically tried to get social proof on it and then we started putting it out to cold audiences of people who lived nearby his facility. As soon as we started doing that, the cost per lead dropped significantly and we were able to scale very quickly to the point where now we're saying, right, well, what do we do for the next three weeks while we're not running paid ads, right? Well, let's diversify. Let's make sure that we no longer have to rely on Facebook in the future when there's a new opportunity to scale the business and we do want a lot more leads on the table. Let's not be at the mercy of Facebook and Instagram ads. Let's diversify. Let's create some content today. Let's produce a lead magnet. Let's get people onto the email list so that we have an email list. Let's also uh, create a frequently asked questions video to put on the landing page so that we can overcome objections and we can get better cost per leads in the future as well. So as you can see, when we use Facebook ads that have a ton of social proof on them, they're so much more likely to get a low cost per lead. Even if it's lowering the cost per click, that's not the big thing here. It's that they're already going to be pre-sold when they go through onto the website. So that's what we really want. I mean, if you get people to book calls for your business or you send people to your website, it's exactly the same thing. We want them to be pre-sold before they ever get on that call. We want them to be pre-sold before they ever see our products on the website. And that the big way to do that is to have a ton of social proof there. And another story about that one is I had a client for the last 18 months, no, 
more than 18 months, so over two years. Uh, and we had one advert running continuously for the last two years. I do nothing other than just look at it in awe. And what we did was we took one great image of their of one of their key products and we created a really, really short piece of text that uh, that hooked people in, described the product, uh, the value proposition of the business, and then said shop now, colon, and a shortened link. We then, instead of putting that out there for website clicks or for conversions, we spent the first maybe two weeks using post engagement as the objective. And what we ended up with was over 2,000 likes on the, or 2,000 reactions on that single post. And when we actually looked at the results, the good thing was is that we had already broken even from using post engagement. So we were getting so much engagement, probably because of the social proof that was growing, we were able to convert a lot of people who were optimized just for getting those likes and comments and shares. But then after that, we had this incredible advert that we used and we put it specifically out to people who visited the website in the last three days but did not make a purchase. So we had this really high, uh, really high social proof post that we were able to put in front of people who were at their warmest point possible. They were in the consideration stage. They possibly had already added things to cart and hadn't made a purchase. And then we just get to overcome objections with that much social proof. It worked incredibly well. We had an average over the two years at about 42x as our return on investment. We were able to scale up and hammer the ads that people would see over those four days and still maintain that 42x on a on an average. We had some days that would be like 7x and we had some days that would be like 82x. But overall, over the two years, it came out at about 42x. And this is the, the power of social proof. It's just showing that other people have already walked the path. It's just eliminating risk. And there's so many options out there. Who should we work with? Who should we work with? Who should we buy with? Who should we buy from, should I say? And often, the easiest thing for us when we've got so many decisions to make is to purely just go with what other people are already doing. In fact... And if you're on YouTube right now rather than iTunes, behind me, thinking fast and slow. Right, you see that? Thinking fast and slow. In this book, they talk about, well, they talk about so much stuff. It, and if you get the audio book, it's about 22 hours long. It's an absolute nightmare. But the stuff that you learn in it about human psychology and how people buy, man, it is incredible. And one thing that they actually talk about is how we make decisions based on things like brand name. That even if something tastes better, even if the um, e- even if the branding looks amazing on a new product, we'll go with an old brand name because it makes it an easier decision for ourselves. It's the same thing with when we have a ton of social proof. We can just simply show that other people are interested, other people are taking action, and it can make the decision easier for ourselves to simply follow suit with what everybody else is doing. It's why influencers are so amazing. They, like Influencers, people go, oh, well, that that person wouldn't make me want to use that product. Well, yeah, but they, they make a lot of other people want to use the product, and that's why influencers are so effective. And furthermore, influencers aren't there as a conversion tool. They're actually there as an awareness tool. So that's a, a spoiler alert for, for influencers. But back to social proof hacks. Facebook ads, you want to massively focus on getting social proof on your ads. So a very easy way to do that is to lead with a question. Get people to actually start commenting on your adverts. As the engagement goes up, other people will see that's happening and they will also start engaging with your content. Another thing that you can do is if you are running a ton of different adverts, you're duplicating adverts, you're using different audiences, then go to page posts. So in your adverts adverts manager, you've got tons of options there. You could go to billing, you could go to audiences, you could go to conversions, go to page posts. Find the advert that you just created, 
get that advert ID and add it to all future adverts. So I could run an advert right now and in three years time, I could go back, I could get that advert ID and set up a brand new advert and use that as the creative. And the great thing is it pulls all of those likes, all of those comments, all of those shares through to the new advert. So this is this is why you should look at investing in a single advert that goes really well is a great opportunity. You should almost look at it like an asset in your business. And that's the way that I always describe it when I'm working with clients. I'm like, yeah, I know that you want me to run a ton of different adverts and and you might think that's what you're paying me for, but it's what you're really paying me for is I know how to get the results here. And what you want to be doing is you want to be running uh, one advert that is highly effective and you want to be throwing money behind this one advert and one creative. And the reason why is because you'll build up so much social proof that it doesn't matter if you're going in front of a warm prospect or a cold prospect with that advert down the line, it's going to get results. The same thing with that uh, that advert that had over 2,000 likes on it. We were able to use that to cold audiences and get people to buy immediately. They were able to skip a lot of the building no like and trust because I suppose you could say that the trust part was almost taken care of because everybody else was reacting so well to that post and therefore the brand. And so using uh, social proof in your Facebook ads and your Instagram ads and any other paid advertising is an absolutely huge deal. So that's number one. Number two was social proof facts. So yes, we want to look at our business and say, what can we actually create as like a one sentence fact about our business that shows huge amounts of social proof? Have you won awards? Are you rated number one somewhere? Have you worked with over 10,000 people? Have you sold over 50,000 products? Have you got a average of five star rating on Facebook? Are you rated number one restaurant in the city on TripAdvisor? What are your social proof facts and where can you use them? Email, paid advertising, website, all over the place. You've got so many options, so many options. And furthermore, we have images of real happy customers. Oh, this is a good one. So when we're actually running Facebook ads specifically, but uh, this does whittle down into the images that are on your website, the images that are uh, going out on social media on day to day. But man, nothing converts like a face. And second of all, nothing converts like a happy face that is in the after state of whatever it is that you're selling. So a real authentic person, not a photo shoot, but if you run a gym, if you sell a product, if you run events, what you want is you want pictures of people at that event having a great time. If you have a gym, you want people at the end of a session high-fiving each other and smiling. If you sell a product, you want to have some people authentically posting a photo that maybe just take this off of Instagram through your hashtag, through your tags, people who have actually posted about how excited they are to have received the product. Those types of images convert like crazy. People stop scrolling when they see faces. People take action when they see happy people in the after state of where they want to be. And so think about those three examples and which one could be closest to your business and how could it affect your business. Now, I've had many, many advert campaigns that I've put out there that have absolutely bombed in the first couple of days. And I have changed nothing, nothing about the audience. I've changed nothing about the copy, nothing about the headline, nothing about the offer, nothing about the call to action. And the only thing I change, and this is always my first go-to with Facebook ads that aren't performing the way that I want them to perform. I change the image. The image holds so much value in your results. The variable is in the creative and the main part of the creative is the image or the video. And so you want to focus in on getting that completely right. And a huge thing is real authentic people 
not staged, not actors, real authentic people who are using your product or service and having a great time using them. They're happy. They're they're just showing how happy they are to be using your product or service. And so that is an absolute killer one to use. Faces, happy faces in the after state. And that goes on quite nicely to the final one, number four, which is share other people's experiences. We have the opportunity to have people tagging us with hashtags, with location tags, tagging our actual pages, sending us emails. We we can have people from all, all over social media, all throughout our emails, all throughout our website, sending us pictures and testimonials of their experiences of working with us. I mean, if you're a restaurant, I mean, that's the easiest one ever. I mean, if you've got good food and especially if you've got good looking plates, people are going to take photos of it. They're going to put it up in their Instagram stories and they're going to tag you. They're also going to put it out onto their Instagram profile and they're going to use hashtags, they're going to use location tags and they're going to tag your page. You want to go and look for the hidden places where all of these best possible images may be hiding. And it's, it goes way further than restaurants. Gyms, it goes for product-based. I mean, I, I worked with a client uh, three years ago who was a brand new product in the market it, with a huge competitor as well. It was always going to be quite a big challenge for us to get off the ground. And what we wanted to do was show that other people were using the product. And only a few people were. So what we did was we created a competition. And the way that we encourage that social proof to go out and for people to share their experiences that got in front of their friends, but also allowed us to share it, was to actually incentivize it through a competition. And what we did was we said that you could win £50 of free products and we choose one person every month who uses the hashtag and then we had a hashtag for the company. And so we were able to like massively increase the amount of people who were posting and then we were able to take that imagery and we were to be we put it on the website we shared it on our instagram stories we shared it as our instagram uh, everyday content we put it out on facebook we used it in adverts and it was real authentic images of people using the product so you've got two ways to use this right here first of all you can just go and look at the images that you've already got coming in for your business and you can make it a priority to always go looking even for the hidden ones the ones who might have a misspelled hashtag who might be the best image that you've ever seen from a customer of your business and so you want to go and look every which way to find the images of people using your product to your service, and then you want to share it into your own social media channels. It encourages a few things as well. So first of all, if people are posting, it's awesome. It's absolutely awesome because they are literally just referring their friends, even without knowing it. They might think they're showing off about how good their plate of food is or that they've just bought this product. All they're doing is Uh, creating new customers for you out of their friends and family. On top of that, they are encouraging other people to start posting about this as well. Uh, And when you see that other people have been posting and you share it, that's what you, you end up doing as well. You end up encouraging people to start posting their experiences because what you'll find is, is most people don't have hundreds of thousands of followers, they don't have tons of people commenting, and that's ultimately what a lot of people want. They want people to find their page and to follow them. And something that everybody wants is a shout out by a brand. People love shout outs by brands. And something that I found with a whole bunch of client businesses is if we start focusing our content all around sharing customer experiences, then more customers start posting about their experiences as well. So if you do have people posting about your business, then start sharing that stuff all the time. First of all, social proof sells. So the people who are already following you are going to start coming in and they're going to start buying because they see that other people are having a great experience and they want it as well. And at that stage, the camera just went off, which means that we're at 28 minutes. Fantastic. And so... Where was I? Fuck. That is what that is what happens when this camera goes off. Right. Where were we? 
So if you already have people posting about your business on social media, using hashtags, using location tags, tagging your pages, then you want to share that. It is a huge opportunity to, first of all, to sell to your current followers because as soon as people who are already interested in you, already following your page, already in consideration, see that other people are buying your products and your services and they're having a great time whilst doing it, it moves people to action. Second of all, it encourages your followers to go and do the same, to actually go and post about your business. Because when you start posting crazy about your your customers all the time, what you end up with is a whole bunch of people who want to be shared as well. I've heard a ton of people from my friends, my sister says it all the time about her favorite restaurant. She gets so excited when <laughs> she gets so excited when they share her pictures. She'll literally get the best picture she possibly can of the food that she didn't create that they created so that she can post it on her social media, which will get her friends and her family down to the restaurant. But then when it gets shared by that restaurant, she is absolutely ecstatic. She couldn't wait to tell me. She actually uh, screenshotted it and sent it to me. And that's the kind of behavior that you get from people who want to be shared by companies. They want brands to share their pictures of the brand. And so, yeah, you're going to encourage your followers to then take action because they can see other people are taking action, but you're also going to encourage them to start posting more about your business. And can you see how this is like a viral loop here of social proof? You're encouraging people to post, then you're taking the posts and you're posting yourself. And it just goes round in a circle or a triangle, I guess, by the way that I just did it on this table. So, yeah. So you want to be posting all the time the the customer experiences that you've already got. Now, if you're sitting there right now and you're saying, well, that might be fine for them, but I don't have customer experiences. Nobody is posting about their experience with me. Hey, you might have a business that you might deem is very difficult to get people to post about, but it might not be. And especially if you incentivize it. Now, a client that I had already and that I've mentioned, we incentivized it by creating that competition. And maybe that's what you could do as well. You could take a competition and maybe it, it doesn't have to be something you're going to run forever more as well. Maybe like we say, you're just going to encourage people to the point where you've got enough people posting every month and then you pull the, the competition back. And so you just get people into the habit of posting their experiences every single time they purchase from you. And then your social media becomes a lot more about other people's experiences. I mean, like if I'm a restaurant, like I say, like I keep using a restaurant, but I'm trying to pull from different directions. If I'm a restaurant, I don't want tons and tons of really, really high res images. They have their time, they have their place and they have their value especially if you're doing like new menu or a weekly special, but your day-to-day content should be the very, very best images that people are sharing. And especially if there's a caption alongside it that says, this is the best thing I've ever tasted. You share that and people are going to come in because they see that other people have bought it and are giving it a flamboyant review like that. And there's one other benefit of getting people to to post by using competitions. People know that they're not going to win the competition if they don't sing your praises. So people are not going to try and win the competition by posting saying, just got a delivery. Every single one of them is going to post saying, oh my God, the best time of the week. I finally got this, it's the best product ever because they think that it's going to have a higher probability that they're going to be chosen as the winner. So how does that affect your social proof? Goes through the roof. Sure, they will be being happy anyway. There's nobody who listens to this podcast who doesn't have a phenomenal product or service and I know that as a scientific fact and therefore people are going to be very happy but this is just encouraging them to go a bit more flamboyant with their vocabulary and really emphasize 
that this is the best experience of their life. It's better than their wedding day. It's better than the birth of their first child. They love this stack of pancakes. They love it. And so you want to encourage that as much as physically possible. And that's the four. So the four is on Facebook ads, you want to go all in with one or two adverts that have really high social proof and you want to get that in front of people. You want to focus on getting people to like, comment and share on your actual adverts so that it massively reduces your cost per click and therefore reduces your cost per lead on the other side as well. Get people pre-sold before they ever land on your landing page. So they're more likely to take action. So they're more likely to book a call. So they're more likely to turn up to that call. So start right at the start and lead with social proof. Next up, share other people's experiences. So we just ran through that one, share other people's experiences. It makes your content schedule a lot easier. Trying to come up with content every single day, I know that it can be a bit of a struggle. I know, I've been there, I am there. I've got tons of clients that I run Instagram accounts for. Coming up with content is a struggle every single day, especially good content because if you post once per month and it isn't good content, you're posting too often because it still needs to be great content and great content very often can be real life experiences of people who have worked with your business, bought your products, worked with your service, whatever it may be. So share other people's experiences. And we talked about the whole loop round of how it encourages other people to post about your business because they want to get featured as well. And then not only does sharing that into your own social media get your followers to take action, it also gets their friends and family when they're posting to take action as well. Social proof from sharing other people's experiences is ginormous. Next up, social proof facts. So, have you won any awards? Have you got five star reviews on Google? Have you got uh, Have you got over two hundred twenty thousand subscribers on your email list? That's another social proof fact to get people onto an email list. That's one that got me onto an email list, and I know the exact one that I'm talking about. It said that over 800,000 people were on the email list, and I was like, it must be pretty good. So I signed up to the email list. So you want to look at what facts, what one sentence facts can show every single person who's seen your advert, who's read your email, who's landed on your homepage, show them that other people have walked their path that they're considering and have got a great result out of it. Finally, images of real happy customers. The image is so important, whether it's an organic post, whether it's an advert, it's the image. The image stops people scrolling. The image gets people engaged. The image gets people pre-sold. The image gets people to take action. And what gets people to take action more than anything with an image is showing people who look like them who are taking action and who are feeling the way that they want to feel. And so showing people in the after state, in an image, is so highly effective. Oh man, just think think it through. We, we went through a whole bunch of ideas from somebody in a gym being at the end of a session, high-fiving the person who they were training with, with a big smile on their face. That's not what people think about gyms. People think that going to the gym is a chore. It's something that they're not going to enjoy. It's something that they have to do. And this image can show that your gym is completely different. People want to train here. They have a great time and they can't wait to come back again. That is an image that tells a story and gets people to take action. If you're product-based and you're like, well, I can't film people whilst they're opening the, the box that arrives at their house. Well, yeah, true but tons of people are going to share their experiences and then you can ask for permission to share their images. So people who hold up a picture and put out on Instagram stories, finally it came in the post and I couldn't be happier with it. It's the best hair clip that I've ever bought. When they do that, you want to be getting in touch and saying, do you mind if we use this image? It's a great image, really big them up. And yeah, most people, 99.9% of people, 
are so excited when brands ask if they can use their image. So you've got a whole bunch of things that you can do there. And that is four huge things for social proof. Four social proof hacks. And because social proof is one of two things that massively move needles like anything else. So that is social proof and the other one is 100% money back guarantees. Those are the two things I've seen that whether you're right at the start of the customer journey or you're trying to sell to somebody for the 46th time, those are the two things that get people to take more action, that increase the conversion rates. Social proof and 100% money back guarantees. Here are four big social proof hacks and you can take action on these right now. None of these are difficult to do. Every single one of these could be actioned right now and you could be increasing your conversion rates to the people who leave your social media to go to your website. It could be increasing the amount of people who go from your homepage to your sales page and it can be increasing the amount of people who either become leads or purchasers on that visit. So let's get to action. Let's write these four down and let's actually get an action plan of how you're going to use it and then Don't walk away from the table for the next 45 minutes. Go and action them all. Get started on them all. Get them action because it is massively going to move the needle on your business. And that is the end of the podcast for this episode. If you have enjoyed it, if you haven't enjoyed it, I want to know as well. But whether you've enjoyed it or not, it would be massively, massively appreciated. If you could subscribe, if you could... Uh, leave a review and tell me about the podcast. Tell me what you're happy about. Tell me what you're not happy about. Tell me what you want in future episodes. I write all of these down just as I'm going, as I've got ideas. So as I'm thinking about social proof and how it moves the needle, I wrote down an episode. I came through here and I've just filmed it. You tell me what you want solved, what problems you want solved with your online marketing, with your business. What is the biggest issues that you're trying to solve in your business and I'll create an episode around it. So please take that little second to actually subscribe, to to rate the podcast on iTunes or Stitcher or Spotify or YouTube, wherever you are. And uh, yeah, it would be massively appreciated. Until next time, you can hit me up at neil at neilshoney dot com you can also visit my website at neilshoney.com and you can get in touch with me directly very easily on instagram at neil shoney mac it actually looks like neil's honey which is something that i'm never going to be able to get away from people say that to me all the time on the phone some some guy actually said to me the other day do you have bees and i said do i have what and he said bees and i said bees like what like bees and wasps and he said yeah i see it's neilshoney.com and i was like it's neilshoney.com i was like i'm never getting away from this it's the worst worst web address i could ever have picked i don't think i'm going to get away from it now so visit me at neilshoney.com and uh, i will see you on the next podcast mm-hmm.